Welcome to People Like You. Today we'll share the recent story of a retired police officer who intervened in the brutal beating of a CHP officer. We'll meet that retired officer, Pastor Joel Jones, and his wife, Annalisa, so don't go away. We were sitting in the car and I said, what happens now? So then he went down to get her gun. And I told Annalisa, I said, stay here. I said, I have to go. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, be with me. Yeah. The Lord got me ready for this. You see, mm -hmm. my whole life, mm -hmm. even when I didn't know him, he had his hand on me. Welcome back. Reverend Joel Jones, pastor of Spirit of Truth Church Worldwide and a retired police officer, was driving on a California highway when he witnessed the brutal beating of a CHP officer. What happened next may surprise you. I know we're going to talk about that a little later in the program, but you know, Pastor Joel, you are a hero. Well, <clears throat> I know people keep saying that. The uh, <laughs> point is I'm a reluctant hero, if that at all, because I... It's a long story, but it wasn't me. It was just I was in, put in the right place at the right time. And uh, my life is, is dedicated to doing God's work wherever he puts me. So I, wow. I use it as the uh, chessboard effect. Uh, we're all chess pieces on the board, and God moves us Man. where we, where he needs us most yes. to get the effect that. that he wants and mm -hmm. so I was uh, that piece that he moved in that Amen, area at that, that time. Day. Wow. Uh, so I appreciate that but uh, I have to throw it right back that uh, without him I, I'd have been lost. So. Mm -hmm. Service. And, and that's kind yeah. of how you feel about your life as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you were, let's see, you were number 12 or number, you had 12 children in your family. Tw I was 12 to 13. Oh. I, I, he almost forgot about me. You know? <laughs> my, my mother was running out of names, you know. When she got down to me, it was jo uh, my older brother was Joseph, and then I was Joel. So you're getting into the Joes now. So <laughs> after that, there was a no. So I uh, I made it in, and uh, I'm thankful. I, th I think everything was just preordained. And, and you're mm -hmm. from Chicago on the South Side. Yes, we mm -hmm. are. Okay, and you were raised Muslim. Now, Annalisa, you were not. No, I was not raised yeah. Muslim. I was a, I was a Christian, baptized at eight year eight years old. Okay, yeah. so then there is a story here. Yeah, how you met, there's but a you story. Were there's a testimony there. Muslim, <laughs> tell us about that. Well, <clears throat> my father moved up from down south, uh, Mississippi and Memphis and that area. And back in the fifties and the, the the early fifties, a lot of uh, African American men and families were moving up north, mm -hmm. as I understand it, uh, for a better life, economic opportunities. So the first half of my family, all my older siblings, were born and raised down south. But by mm -hmm. the time they moved up in the 50s, where well, I was born, me, uh, my brothers and I were born, born in Chicago. And of course, uh, my father not, not having any connections, at the time the Nation of Islam uh, was very, very uh, full in, mm -hmm. in the south, on the south side of Chicago, mm -hmm. which is where we landed. Mm -hmm. So of course, they went out to him and he accepted uh, their doctrine. Yeah. He had been looking for Christ. He had, al he had also, he had actually uh, been in different churches, Jehovah's Witnesses and some other mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, doctrines. However, I don't think he was rooted at that time. Mm -hmm. And so when the nation approached him, he felt a brotherhood. Yeah. And so I was born into Islam at that point. And it's very active in Chicago then. Very, yes. very active. Especially at that, during that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, so I was born into it. Not that I even believed much in it, but I it. certainly wasn't gonna cross my dad. So I better <laughs> not a bad, not I a better good idea, show some interest, yeah. and, and and I did, and and um, he he raised us as strictly as he could. You know, we didn't smoke or drink or yeah. things like that. So how did you become Christian? Well, now that's a whole other ball of wax. You know, I didn't believe in Christianity, and but in 2004, something very supernatural happened. My wife and I have been married 30 years. Mm -hmm. 2004, we grew up together. 
Well, and you were in music before, too, R&B. We were in rhythm and blues, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So we were doing a little bit of everything, um, theater, acting, you know, and, and so we were in the world. We were very, as a Christian, I was very secular. I was very in, in the world, you know, straddling. Okay, let's go through some of this. Pro football. Mm -hmm. All right. I, I went to college, and uh, they started courting me. Mm -hmm. um, I started hearing from scouts, and they said I had a chance to get drafted, and I had made some honors, a captain, all-conference. And um, I, I looked at it as a way to help the family. You know, there's a lot of kids in my family. Uh, yeah. We were bigger than the King family back then. I mean, just didn't have the money. <laughs> so uh, I said, well, this is a way to uh, help the family so when the pros came calling I put all my effort into making a pro team and I was uh, at, right at the door I, uh, when I got injured injured a knee and then uh, I had to go as a free agent mm -hmm. and start and so the offers the offers were rescinded and I had to knock on doors I had an agent and he would send me out to uh, a couple of teams, Dallas Cowboys and uh, the USFL mm -hmm. League, and it didn't last long. And after that, uh, during that time, we had been sort of raised in music, so I had this ear for music, and uh, she could really sing. And so we started doing music, and I, that was another thing that was uh, waved under our noses at that time. Yeah, and, and so uh, there's so much to cover with you. We have to go to break already. I can't believe it's <laughs> our time. Lot, yeah. um, you actually sung un under a different name, and you were on stage with folks we would recognize very well. I mean, you were on your yeah. way yes. in that career. Yeah. Okay. Um, we were, yes, we can talk Let's about Let's talk that. about when we come back. Okay. More with Joel and Annalisa Jones when we return. Don't go away. The gods and angels. I didn't know about Gabriel. I, I had never ever read a Bible and I was 49 when this happened. I said this is one time where the police were taken into custody <laughs> by the Lord <laughs> to set the cop free. Yeah. He thought he was free but was locked down. Yeah. Yeah. Who could oh, do that but God? Right. Nobody right. but Jesus. Right. Welcome back. We're here with Pastors Joel and Annalisa Jones. So tell us about rhythm and blues. <laughs> rhythm <ahead>. and blues. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I have to say that um, as a child, I, I grew up, although I grew up singing in a choir, like I said, it was uh, carnal, you know, so you can do both. And I grew up thinking, you know, looking in the mirror, singing Ike and Tina Turner, you know, songs and Aretha Franklin and Gladys Knight. And so when I, when, when I met my husband, he said, you know, you could sing. And I'm like, <laughs> I can? And so one thing led to another, and we started singing with bands, and we started our own uh, D&J entertainment uh, company. And so we ended up singing, the last thing we did, I would say, with the Motown Review, paying tribute to Ike and Tina Turner, Aretha Franklin, and the, and the greats, and sharing the stage at the, uh, where, where, where were we? Uh, we were at Kimball's East, Kimball's uh, East Monterey, and Blues, Monterey Festival. Blues Festival. Uh, we, uh, we were sort of like uh, guns for hire, you know, wherever there was a, if you needed a party, you called us, and we would <laughs> instant, sing. And, instant uh, party package. She had this, <laughs> this, this, di this dynamic voice that was uh, one of those Aretha Franklin type of voices. Yeah. Of course, in that time period, that's what the music uh, called for, and she didn't even know she had it. But my ear, I heard it, yeah. and I said, "This, this in the woman kitchen. can really in sing." The she was in the kitchen She was in the kitchen dishes, cooking when I first dishes. heard her sing, and. Of course, when people started hearing it, they said, yeah, we, we need you guys to do this music. Yeah. So we started going out, and what better way for a couple who lives together that yeah. we could rehearse just lying on the bed looking at the ceiling. Right. We would go <laughs> through notes. <laughs> so it was pretty, it was pretty, pretty easy, easy yeah. you know? And uh, I said, well, maybe that's why the football didn't, okay, we'll do this, yeah. because she is just, and uh, I had an ear for it, so we started singing as a, as a couple. But mm -hmm. then you had an encounter. Something happened. <sighs> Supernatural. That you weren't expecting. Oh, I God. always thought we would go on the road and you know, we have old grown children now, adult children, but I said as soon as they grow up, we're gonna hit the road and we're just gonna <laughs> go all over the world, you know, doing blues, R&B. But the Lord came in such a supernatural way. 
And it was, to me, it was like the, the similar to the Samaritan woman meeting the Messiah and hearing his voice and Some instructing us. Some people aren't gonna us. understand the word supernatural that are watching us right now. So yeah. let's a little more detail as to what that means. Well, she started, uh, her finger would move uh, on its own and would spell out words, of course. And I know people listen to this saying, wait a minute, but because that's what I said. And she said, I can spell out these words. And they say that they're angels and God has a plan for us. And I said, wait a minute, oh, honey, you're moving your finger, duh. You know, you're moving your finger. And she said, no, I'm not, I wouldn't do that. And I've known her since we were 14, you know, we were both 14 when we met. And so I knew she wasn't one to play around like this. Yeah, it was like Jesus writing in the sand. So the Lord is speaking to your heart. Yeah, I mean, speaking you, to my heart. Yeah. And it was coming out as, as someone would journal, like, but like, I could. Like when you write a song, sometimes the yeah. Lord will speak through you through song, through and you're, you know, through music and yes. all of that. I would see this writing and it was so genuine. It wasn't even in the vernacular that she would speak. Yeah. It would call my name three times, Joel, Joel, Joel. We have a plan for you and your wife. We know you believe in us somewhat, but how would you like to see us? So at that point, I said, that's a deal. Of course, the days went by and I didn't see anything. Nobody came to me. I was at work and I don't see a mouse standing on two feet. I don't see anything. A burning happening. bush or anything like that. And then one day as I was getting up to, right themselves. after that, they revealed themselves mm -hmm. to me as I was getting ready to go jogging. And I saw the three uh, angels come into view as I'm standing there, just like I'm looking at you and they were looking at me. Mm -hmm. And uh, that changed everything. Changed everything mm -hmm. for you. So the Lord does speak in different mm -hmm. ways to yes. individuals to make he himself knows, known. He knows how to get our attention. He knows how to get our attention, mm -hmm. which he did with you. So, well, more after the break. Sure. Okay, mm -hmm. more with Pastors Joel and Annalisa Jones when we return. We were sitting in the car and I said, what happens now? So then he went down to get her gun. And I told Annalisa, I said, stay here. I said, I have to go. Mm -hmm. Then I said, Lord, be with me. Yeah. Welcome back. Pastors, where we left off, you were Muslim, which was very, you know, inbreded within you. Yes. And so then these things are happening, you're a police officer, and it's just, you know, this doesn't make sense. Um, but then the Lord spoke to you. What happened next? Yes. Well, he made a believer out of me. He yes. told me things that only he could know. She mm -hmm. couldn't know the things he told me. Mm -hmm. And uh, yet here it was coming out, and he said, uh, I'm God, I'm the same yeah, God, God of Abraham, Abraham Isaac, Isaac, and Jacob. And this is the first time I'd ever heard, I yeah. didn't even know who Jacob and these guys were, <laughs> right, but right. I, I hear this voice saying, I, must, I said, there must be something to this. And the things he told me, yeah. nobody else could yeah. know. Yeah. You yes. see, she didn't know that, yes. but, but he was reading my life yes. to me. Yeah. He was saying it's time. Yes, yes. It's time, and so. at that point I said, well, if this is a trick, I give up, she got me. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think it is because she can't know this. He told me things that were going on before I met her yes. and mm -hmm. he knew. Yes. And he said, why do you think I brought you back when you drowned? And I had drowned in ninth grade yeah. and she, had, she never know. knew that. Yeah. Wow. And so these were things that he only he, he could, could know. know. And I gave up and I said, okay, okay. And he said, but you must repent your sins yes. to me right now yes. because I'm yeah. God. Yeah. Yes. And he told me to bow my head and mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. And um, after that, he said, so after I repented, he said, but now son, I'm gonna bless you mm -hmm. yeah. and your wife yeah. and your mm -hmm. children's children's children mm -hmm. and all the people you love will mm -hmm. be blessed. Mm -hmm. And that's where the instructions came. I love yeah. that testimony in that, uh, it, like a pastor at um, Oak Park Assembly was a teenager and somebody gave him a track and in his own bedroom, he accepted mm -hmm. Christ yes. alone in his bedroom. Yes. So yes. those that are praying for folks and you yes. know loved yes. ones and they think, you know, this is never gonna happen. The Lord can go through those walls and it goes yes. through the, uh, the walls of our heart and yes. he speaks yes. to us on a personal yes. level, which is yes. what you just, exactly. you know, it, Okay, so you've written some yes. books, uh, yeah. a book. You've one written, book. I've got it here, On the Job, but you're, you're underway with another one, which we're gonna talk about, On the Job with God, mm -hmm. The Awakening. And this gives more detail of mm -hmm. what you've discussed yes. today. Yes, yes. And uh, Absolutely. kind of the intimate points of how the Lord um, 
just, just went for it and yes. grabbed you yes. Yes. And, did. and loved you it and changed the direction of your water. life. You yeah. know, I tell, I tell people and uh, a lot of the officers I meet, I said this is one time where the police were taken into custody <laughs> by the Lord to set the cop free. Yeah. Who thought he was free but was locked down. Yeah. Yeah. Who could oh, do that but God? Right. Nobody right. but Jesus. Right. Nobody but Jesus. So, so then, okay, so then you retired, you, you're pastors, yes. mm -hmm. all right, and you decided to write, you're writing another book. Yes. Uh, when the Lord told us to write this book, he said you will write a uh, series, a sequel to this book, mm -hmm. because it's not the end of it. We can't cover yeah. everything, everything in this book. Yeah. He, so we, he said, this is the awakening. The w yes. On the job with God, you've yeah. been awakened. Yes. He said, now on the next uh, series will be on the job with God, taking it to taking the streets. Taking it to the streets. So the things, uh, most of the things that have happened in the streets are not contained in this book because they mm -hmm. were happening as I was Teaching, writing. Teaching, yeah. And I was waiting to end it. I didn't know how he wanted me to end it. Yes. And I said, but th what shall I use, Lord? And at that point, something happened. And that, that uh, was unexpected. You unexpected. were driving just as a citizen down yes. a California highway. Give us some of that detail. Taking care of business. Well, we were just had just moved to, to an area, and, and uh, we were headed back to finish moving furniture, as a matter of fact, that morning. And I, we had to be there at 9.30, and I said, come on, let's go. It's 8. 20 or something like yeah. that and we head out on the road and there's a truck hitting cars he's on the freeway of uh, interstate 80 going westbound he's doing about 85 or 90 miles an hour and he's pulling up to the rear of cars almost two feet away tailgating him so these poor little ladies who were driving were trying to you know they're looking in the mirror trying to get away from him mm -hmm. and they didn't move fast enough so he just rammed the car and one lady hit the guardrail and spun around, spinned around on the freeway, mm -hmm. and all these cars <gasps> almost hit her. So oh we had gosh. to swerve. Oh, yeah. and it's complete gridlock. He continues going. He breaks through, and he hits another car. Mm -hmm. Does the same thing. So I told her, Annalisa, I said, "Call 911. Get on the cell phone now." Mm -hmm. And she did. And I put it out and said, "I'm trying to catch up with this vehicle." I don't want him to get away because the Lord had put on my heart to follow him. Mm -hmm. And he was ahead of us. So I, I tailed him and finally CHP pulled him over. Mm -hmm. And when they pulled him over, something told me to, and now the Lord didn't speak at this point, but to stay, to stay. Yes, the Holy and, Spirit was and, nudging. Me. And so I told Annalisa, let's just hang back and see what happens. This officer might need help. So you can call it the word of wisdom right. if you want, mm -hmm. but, but it, was from um, it was happening like in milliseconds. So when she pulled him over, I knew it was a female officer. I didn't know until I heard her voice say, sir, step out of the car. At that point, I was about 20 feet behind her. She didn't even know. Mm -hmm. And I saw this man get out of the truck. And when he got out, he faced her. And he said, oh, I'm not taking this. And he rushed her. Mm -hmm. He rushed toward her. And as she's getting out, because she wasn't really ready, he was two feet away. And he started pummeling her. <sighs> he hit her several times mm -hmm. in the face, knocked her down, started stomping her, all the while yelling like he was out of his mind. We were sitting in the car, and I said, what happens now? So then he went down to get her gun. He was at her waistline and he's tugging and mm -hmm. she's moaning and she's on the ground. Her radio has been knocked off of her mm -hmm. uh, uh, holster and everything else. And I told Annalisa, I said, stay here. I said, I have to go. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, be with me. Yeah. When and, he said, Lord, be with me, that's when I that had was peace. It. When they said, it. call on the name of Jesus. Yeah. And when I got out of that car, I don't even know how I got to him. I just know it was like I was shot out of a cannon mm -hmm. because I couldn't risk wrestling with him over this gun because even if I right. could subdue him he still could just go pop out shoot us and right. shoot my wife right. mm -hmm. so at that point I had to propel him off of her I knew that but how to get the power how to get the angle I didn't know but I'm gonna tell you what when I made contact with him he flew five feet in the air his feet were up in the air he was on his back he was sprawled out on the ground I pounced on him and now he's five feet away from her mm -hmm rotated yes. him, got his face on the ground, yeah. got his arm behind his back, and then another Fair gentleman game. pulled over. And, and, and he happened to be a, an uh, ex -men, a children's, ex -children minister. minister. 
Oh, that's what um, the Lord yes. said. He pulled over, and then another gentleman who happened to be a parolee Parole. pulled over. So the Lord just started sending. And, and, and I call, I'm, I call I'm in the car praying. Yeah, yeah. and she's so praying, and she's got the, the, uh, the uh, um, so CHP officer. So I had gotten officer. out of the car at that point. I told her to stay, yeah. but of course she didn't. Of course. Well, so we, she got you out. Know, <laughs> you know how it is. So the three of you have him down now. and Yes, and it's a pretty tidy scene. Uh, it, it worked wow. out. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of it was that nobody died. And the Lord told me to say it. He said, say nobody's dying today. I didn't know who, if they were dead on the road, but something told me mm -hmm. that nobody Spirit, was, yeah. the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. And so um, that man didn't die. That officer didn't die. We didn't die. Wherever he is now, hopefully he has a chance to commune with God. Yeah. And the Lord is using the gifts that uh, he had given Joel as a police officer mm -hmm. to do what he had to do as an line, ex-linebacker yeah. to go and use whatever he needed to use, the gifts yeah. that he had given him there. And so God was so involved in everything from being on that freeway to um, to going to the, to aiding um, the uh, CHP mm -hmm. officer because she got up and then she fell back down. And I, j I got out of the car because they had the suspect. And so I was able to get out because she was falling, she was in pain, yeah. and I was able to pray, pray for her. To pray for yes. her and be there for yes. her. Yes, It's almost like an analogy yes. of you're in it to win it for, for for souls, for people. Exactly. You are exactly. there for people on a spiritual basis. Exactly. And there you were on a physical basis, kind of exemplifying your exactly. heart. Yeah. Like unconditional love. I'm yes. going to lay down my life. Mm -hmm. I will put my life at risk no here on the line for someone who needs yes. help, mm -hmm. which is what you do every day in the spiritual realm. Exactly. <coughs> the Lord doesn't use, He doesn't throw away leftovers. Mm -hmm. And whatever you've gone through in your life, He's yeah. going to use that experience mm -hmm. for that one moment in time where He mm -hmm. needs to use you. Now you are Amen. the pawn or the rook that I'm going to yeah. use. I so agree with you. Thank you for being with us. Thank it's you for inviting us. To get in touch with Pastors Joel and Annalisa Jones, or for more information about Spirit of Truth Church worldwide, visit SOTCWW.com. For more information about unity in the community, visit UITC1Love.com or KTLN.TV. Remember that KTLN is a donor-supported ministry. Programs like this one are made possible through your support. Thanks for being with us, and we hope you'll join us again next week.